Talking a Manuhiri, no my hare mai ki waitaha. Welcome to the show, and what an exciting show we have lined up for you. Because over the next hour, we're taking you on a journey, not only around Christchurch and Canterbury, but this summer we're hitting the road. That's right, we're taking you on a trip from Christchurch. We head towards the beautiful west coast, from Hokitika right up to Karamea, stopping off in Kumara, Greymouth, Westport, and many beautiful places along the way. We also head back towards the east coast, stopping off in Reefton, and then we continue along the Lewis Pass, ending up in Kaikoura before making our way back to Christchurch. But right now there's a hot air balloon waiting and ready to ascend into the beautiful Canterbury skies. So, let's go. New Zealand's ultimate scenic adventure. A chance to escape to a world of peace and tranquility. Hot air ballooning is a dreamlike experience and when you take a flight with Ballooning Canterbury, you'll be treated to panoramic views across the fertile Canterbury Plains to the Southern Alps. Now we've been blessed with an absolute beautiful morning and Michael, thank you so much for having us on board. Pleasure, Rihanna. Do you want to talk to us about the area and, and why you've chosen to fly here? Well, I'm a fifth generation farmer brought up in Canterbury here and um, so this, that's why I'm here and why I choose to fly here is because it, it's such a, a beautiful landscape. The Canary Plains is pretty unique for ballooning. It's a nice big flat area. We've got the mountains to the west, the sea to the east and what that does in the morning is it allows a nice drainage flow to go across the plains so when we launch in the morning we have a nice gentle breeze that takes us over this beautiful countryside. Do you want to tell us about your background in flying? Okay, I started my flying career as a glider pilot um, have now over 4,500 hours in gliders. I've been New Zealand champion. I have world records, New Zealand records, and was looking for another challenge. So I had to go at ballooning, and I liked it, and got pretty good at it pretty quick. And always had in the back of my mind, because I'm a farmer, that one day I may turn my passion into a job, which I've done, and it's just lovely. What's about these balloons themselves? Okay, this balloon comes all the way from Bristol, England, and we've had the colours designed and set up the way we want it and Camerons have a good reputation around the world of being one of the best balloon builders. I've got thousands of balloons all around the world and that was very important when choosing a ride balloon that we had the best, we had the best technology and we had the safest there was to um, equipment out there there was to buy. The flight takes around an hour and there are two balloon options available. One smaller for those special more intimate occasions and the other bigger for larger groups and is fitted with the latest technology and equipment. And there are a number of locations in the Canterbury area that you can fly. Each group flight can be a personalised experience unique to your wishes. Special, family or romantic occasions, conference flights or team building. The views speak for themselves. And the feeling of flying peacefully through the early morning skies is one like no other. And make sure you take a camera along to capture those everlasting memories. Balloon in Canterbury ensures your experience is one to remember. Well, that was a really cool landing and a perfect photo opportunity, eh, guys? Yeah. Extreme balloon. <laughs> All hands are on deck with the pack up, and before heading back to base, you're treated with a drink and nibbles to celebrate your journey across the skies. You are flowing so high and so well that the gods have joined you in laughter. Congratulations, you are now all officially balloonatics. Cheers! Cheers! If you haven't yet been on a hot air balloon, this has to be something on your list of things to do. Sublex Fashion Footwear and More is one of my favourite places to shop in Canterbury. Now they have an exclusive range and they have garments to suit all occasions. So let's take a look inside. Solex Shoes Fashion and More have a huge selection of top quality exclusive clothing, footwear and accessories, meaning there's something for a woman from top to toe and everything in between. The friendly staff are always on hand to give you great advice and can help you achieve the look you desire and of course help you with those hard decisions. And with three handy locations it couldn't be any easier, so make sure you get in store, you'll definitely be sport for choice. See ya. 
Well, now that I've got all my attire sorted out, I think we can go and have a bit of fun now in the city at one of my favourite places, Winnie Bagos. When you need to get around town, make sure you book a cab with Gold Band Taxis. Booking a taxi with Gold Band is easy. Either call them for an automated booking or download their free mobile app. It's easy to use and when you do book via the app, you can even track how far away your ride is from arriving. Operating since 1929, Gold Band Taxis are the longest serving taxi company in Christchurch. Available 24 hours a day and all year round. Gold Band Taxis are more than just a taxi company because you can also book tours with them for an hour to a whole day around the city and the Canterbury area. They are also the official taxi of Canterbury Rugby and they do their bit for the community with their sponsorship of Ronald McDonald House. Gold Band Taxis also have EFBOS in every vehicle and with great friendly service, your trip will be pleasant and you'll arrive at your destination safely. serving pizza to the people of Christchurch since 1994 and it's believed they serve the best gourmet pizza in New Zealand. The menu also has other options available such as pastas and salads and even caters for special dietary requirements. The restaurant is brand new and is a perfect relaxed environment for families, friendly get-togethers or even romantic dinners. Whatever the occasion, Winnie's has it sorted. There are two other great areas to dine or socialise, either in the main bar or in the spacious outdoor courtyard. Winnie Bagos are never short on entertainment and they have plenty going on, catering for everyone. Winnie Bagos in the city is definitely the place to come for delicious gourmet pizza and of course a great night out. Make sure to come down. One of the most memorable day trips you have to take is from Christchurch to Akaroa. Travelling along the main highway through the changing landscapes that have seen over a thousand years of human history. Taitapu is well worth a stop for a quick refreshment or go off the old Taitapu road and immediately savour in the traditional charm of this village. The buildings of St Paul's Anglican Church and the old Taitapu Library, both completed in 1932, were largely funded by Sir Heaton Rhodes, who lived at nearby Otahuna. A charming 15 to 20 minute walkway leads from the church to the domain, further down the old Taitapu Road. Following near the road is the Christchurch to Little River Rail Trail. This 49 kilometre bike ride follows the route of a 19th century railway and passes through wildlife, rich wetlands and the vast lagoon, Lake Ellesmere and the smaller Lake Forsyth. At the finish of the railway line you come to Little River. Here you can enjoy the very popular cafe and art gallery. Just 80 kilometres from Christchurch city and nestled in the heart of an ancient volcano is the historic French and British settlement of Akaroa, which in Māori means Long Harbour. In 1840, French settlers arrived in Akaroa, which had just been claimed under the Treaty of Waitangi by the English. To this day, Akaroa was the only attempted settlement by the French in New Zealand. Many of the streets have French names, and many descendants of the original French families still live here. There is plenty to explore in the village with its colonial architecture, galleries, craft stores and cafes. Now, if you're a nature enthusiast, then you've got to make it a priority to come out here to Pōhatu Penguins, Akaroa. Now, today, we're going to take the kayaking option and get up close to some of the beautiful wildlife. Sea kayaking during the summer months is a popular option and enables you to enjoy the spectacular scenery and wildlife. The outer coast of Pōhatu Marine Reserve is spectacular, with towering sea cliffs sculptured through the ages by the sea into rock stacks, reefs and deep sea caves. Flea Bay Island and the impressive island arch make an added exciting attraction. It's really something quite spectacular, isn't it, Kevin? It is, yeah, I mean, 
Especially when you can come out of the bay like that. Yeah. You've got just, yeah, the size of the, of the cliffs. I think you've probably got a dream job, wouldn't you say? Uh, I can say, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Although experience is not necessary, trips are only run in settled safe conditions and only guided by experienced guides. Pohatu is the largest Australasian little penguin colony on mainland New Zealand, and it's your chance to view these spectacular birds. You can also make the most of your nature journey by staying in the cosy accommodation set in the heart of the breeding colony. This also gives you the added bonus to enjoy the many scenic walks and soak up the tranquil atmosphere. And by spending time here at Pohatu Marine Reserve, you're doing your part to ensure the preservation of these beautiful birds and this fantastic wildlife for future generations. For more information on the Penguin Tour, kayaking and other packages available, visit pohatu.co.nz. The Port Hills between Christchurch and Littleton Harbour is a popular spot for keen mountain bikers and walkers and has spectacular views overlooking Christchurch and out to sea. And just along the eastern coastline are Sumner and New Brighton beaches, common destinations for beachgoers and keen surfers during the summer months. Now, Christchurch has really turned the weather on for us today. And I'm going to head out and around the city, but what better way to do that than on a bike? Hi Craig. Hi Rihanna. How good, are you? Good thanks, you picked a nice day. Oh absolutely. Now you've come to me, is this part of your business? We come to you and we'll set you up on the bikes and you can go for a lovely ride around Christchurch. You've got big Hagley Park just here, you can do a gentle ride through there and then out the other side to the Christchurch beaches if you wanted and then back here at the end of the day. City Cycle Hire Christchurch offers modern quality bicycles and mountain bike rentals, which are well maintained and regularly serviced. Long term cycle hire is also available. We do a package off the Christchurch gondola, nice gentle ride down to Sumner Beach, or you can go off road down the Rapaki track back round to the gondola base. Sounds great. Shall we head back to the uh, accommodation? Will do. Let's cool. go. Let's do it. Highway 73, the route connecting the west and east coasts of the South Island via the Southern Alps. This three and a half hour car ride will see you witness to some of the world's most spectacular scenery and vast changing landscapes. Rural and friendly towns such as Kiwi, Darfield, Sheffield and Springfield lead you across the Canterbury Plains before the gentle rise to the foothills and the climb over Porter's Pass. Heading into the Alps, the road winds into the skiing area of Porter Heights and Craigieburn as it follows the Waimakariri and Billy Rivers up to Arthur's Pass Village. The settlement of Arthur's Pass is a base for climbing, hiking, hunting and skiing adventures in the adjacent National Park. There is also a good choice of short walks. Just after Arthur's Pass Village and only about a kilometre from the top of the pass itself, you pass Mount Rolleston, home to the Kia, New Zealand's alpine parrot. These cheeky birds are well known for clowning out for handouts and even peeling the rubber seal from your windscreen when you're not looking. After crossing the summit of Arthur's Pass, the road descends into the steep bush-clad Otera Gorge. Otera was once a busy railway settlement at the western end of the 8.6 kilometre rail tunnel through the Alps. This is an area of rugged natural beauty, especially when the rata are blooming over the summer months. From here, travellers then motor down through the fresh green west coast bush, following the Taramako River into the small settlement of Kumara. If you are looking for alternative transportation to get from Christchurch to the west coast, then you can always jump on board the Transalpine. Experience the world famous journey through the Southern Alps on board the Transalpine. Truly one of the world's greatest scenic train trips. From Christchurch, you'll cross the patchwork farmland of the Canterbury Plains. Follow alongside the Waimakariri River before climbing onto alpine scenery on a series of spectacular viaducts. After stopping at Arthur's Pass, you'll then emerge from the long Otera Tunnel 
and descend through subtropical rainforests past the beautiful Lake Brunner before ending the journey in the west coast town of Greymouth. Travel on board, sit back, relax and enjoy the breathtaking scenery. Make it a day trip or choose a scenic escape that includes overnight packages with accommodation and activities. The Transalpine, it really is a trip of a lifetime. Kumara is situated on the stunning Great Alpine Highway, only 20 minutes from either Hokitika or Greymouth. It is also en route to either the glaciers or Punakaiki. Kumara is proud to have many walkways leading from the village. Enjoy views of the mountains, rivers, valleys, bush and old gold tailings. A visit to this little settlement is not complete without a visit to the old Theatre Royal Hotel. Built in 1876 at the beginning of the Kumara Gold Rush, the hotel was the meeting, entertaining and playing place for the miners who had arrived in Kumara from all around the world. When current owners Kerry and Mark Fitzgibbon purchased the hotel in 2010, it was run down, vandalised and in total despair. Two years were spent with local tradesmen working to restore and rebuild the old building to what it is today. In 2013, the Theatre Royal Hotel won the award for the best new redeveloped accommodation hotel. Decorated with stunning Victorian wallpaper, thick, luxurious carpet, antique dressing tables and rich velvet drapes, each room has been meticulously themed and named after well-known past Kamara residents from that golden era. The Bordello Room once belonged to Barbara Weldon, one of New Zealand's most notorious prostitutes. This was the original working girls' room. The downstairs bar and restaurant boast beautiful furnishings that replicate that prosperous time and it's here you can transport yourself to another era and let your imagination go wild. Now this grand old lady is not just a hotel, it's a social centre and it's here you get to meet some of the locals and get to understand why the West Coast is renowned for its great hospitality. Cheers! Our next stop is Hokitika. Arriving at Kumara Junction, head straight through onto State Highway 6. The drive is a short 21 kilometres along the Kumara Junction Highway, along the coastline. The scenic drive is your first glimpse of the wild Tasman Sea. Hi there. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah. The first point of call when you arrive into town and to gather all the information you need is right here at the Hokitika Eye Site. And the friendly staff are always on hand to give you all the information you need. <laughs> Located at the heart of the West Coast is Hokitika. Well known for its treasure trove of spectacular scenic jewels. With picturesque views to the Southern Alps, remarkable native bush walks and cycle trails, bold rivers, superb lakes, rainforest and the Tasman Sea, all located within minutes of the township. A unique bohemian environment with a rich heritage and array of natural resources. It's a cool little town with an abundance of things to enjoy. Hokitika is well known for its relaxed atmosphere. The township caters for everyone with a great selection of cafes, restaurants, craft stores and it's just a short stroll to the beach. Hokitika is also the jade and greenstone capital of New Zealand. There are many artisans carving jade into contemporary carvings of traditional NZ or modern designs and beautiful sculptures. Carvers use diamond tip tools to cut and shape the stone which is made into souvenirs and art objects. Traditional jade have an abundance of treasures and beautifully sculptured top quality jade, ponamu carvings and sculptures, each with its own special meaning. Stop in and try on a piece that catches your eye and visit our friendly knowledgeable team and see one of the biggest raw jade collections in New Zealand. Located just 15 minutes south of Hokitika is the tranquil setting of Lake Mahinapua Scenic Reserve. Here you will be mesmerised with a natural abundance of birds, native bush and forest. Boating, fishing, kayaking, mountain biking and swimming are just some of the recreational activities you can enjoy. Here you can also experience the newest and exhilarating treetop adventure, set among temperate rainforest giants. 
The steel platform is 20 metres high and over 450 metres long and can be enjoyed by everyone, including those that need wheelchair access. Enjoy a leisurely 45 minute to one hour stroll through the beautiful West Coast rainforest treetops. Gently sway in harmony with the enchanted forest. View the exquisite Lake Mahinapua through the richly diverse forest foliage and for the thrill seekers climb to the top of Hukatika Tower 40 metres above the forest floor and be captivated by a sensational vista of the majestic snow-capped Southern Alps and the Tasman Sea. And at the end of your treetop adventure, you can recharge, refresh and enjoy some great local foods in the comfort of Mahinapua Cafe. There's plenty of delicious options on the menu to choose from. New Zealand has some of the most spectacular scenery in the world and what better way to experience that than taking a scenic flight with Wilderness Wings. a personalised and exclusive adventure into the Southern Alps. See breathtaking panoramic views of New Zealand's highest peaks. Discover the wonders of Mount Cook and the Westland National Parks. And see why this amazing alpine region now holds world heritage status. Fly in comfort in your first class window seat and enjoy in-flight commentary from the highly experienced friendly pilots. Get up close to this untouched wonderland and be amazed by the sheer beauty of these epic peaks. And view the turquoise blue alpine lakes and magnificent glaciers en route to the Garden of Eden. This experience is spectacular. What you see from up here is unlike anything else. It's nature in its finest form. A must-do adventure. Wilderness Wings are located at the Hukatika Airport and there are a few different flight options available for anyone wanting to take an adventure of a lifetime. Hukatika is the only beachside town centre on the west coast. Framed by the west coast of the Southern Alps, Hukatika Beach is a place to walk, search for Ponamu, reflect and soak up the atmosphere. At the end of the day, head to Sunset Point, where the Hukatika River meets the Tasman Sea and enjoy the warm glow of the evening sunset. Travelling back to Kumara Junction, follow State Highway 6 north to Greymouth. From the junction, the road winds easily through the coastal bush and farmland to the Taramako River crossing. Here, we cross one of those unique features of New Zealand roads, the single lane bridge. It also provides the rail crossing for the Greymouth Hukatika rail line. The road to Greymouth is interesting and an easy ride passing through coastal farmlands and historical places. Greymouth. Grey in name, but not in nature. The largest town on the West Coast region. With a population of around 14,000 people and it's the commercial heart of the West Coast. The town is located at the mouth of the Grey River on a narrow coastal plain close to the foot of the Southern Alps. You'll find the town surrounded by lush green hills to the east and the Tasman Sea to the west. The Greymouth Town Centre has you covered with all the amenities you may need while on the coast. A great little shopping precinct, you'll find a great selection of cafes, restaurants and boutique shopping. Stuart Nemo Gallery is in the heart of Greymouth and a captivating place to visit. Stuart, or Stu as he's known, is a born and bred coaster. His love for the west coast and its ever-changing scenery shines through in his images. Stunning landscapes over the walls throughout the gallery and there is also a fine selection of New Zealand and local made jewellery and gifts for purchase. And when you do call in, you may even have the opportunity of meeting the man himself. And he's always out for a good old chat. If you're planning on staying in Greymouth, be sure to book in at the Recreational Hotel. Catering for visitors to the area for over a hundred years and proud to offer that genuine West Coast welcome. Known to the locals as the Rec, this hotel offers great warm and comfy accommodation to suit any budget. Newly renovated, the fabulous spacious restaurant serves only the best fresh ingredients. From breakfast through to dinner, the chef's menu has something for everyone, including mouth-watering scrumptious desserts. Fresh fish is also on the menu, including that must-have delectable West Coast whitebait. The bar area is spacious and a great place to relax and has all the sought-after facilities including a TAB 
and the liquor land is conveniently right out front of the hotel. The Great Wall of Greymouth was built for protection along the Grey River, but it is also a great walk. The Point Elizabeth walkway leads you to various old mine sites and coastal forests. The new ship lookout at the breakwater looks across the wide Grey River and back towards the township. Also a great spot to admire the rugged coastline with some impressive surf breaks along the coast for any keen surfer. Greymouth is also an ideal place to explore the central west coast region. The beautiful Lake Brunner is less than a 40 minute drive and is a holiday destination abundant with both water and land based activities. The west coast bush and rainforests also offer a wide range of exciting activities. The west coast may have a reputation for its high rainfall. But because of all that water, we can enjoy the most amazing off-road quad biking adventure through masses of puddles, mud and thriving privately owned rainforest. On your bike, West Coast Adventures has a visitor rating of 95% and is ranked number one of 66 four-wheel drive adventures throughout New Zealand. A fun-filled, safe adventure on rugged man-made tracks through 250 acres of West Coast rainforest. There are many adventures to choose from, such as quad bike tours, go-kart tours, the Hagman Rides and eight four-wheel drive Argo tours. On Your Bike West Coast Adventures is family friendly, but for those more adventurous adults, there is a more advanced track especially for you. It's a fantastic, exhilarating day out amongst the beautiful West Coast rainforest and the best place to be for a mudtastic off-road adventure. Leaving Greymouth, we veer left onto the very famous Coast Road, one of the most spectacular coastal drives in the world. The roads are well sealed all the way and offer some of the most spectacular, breathtaking views along the coast. Puna Kaiki is located near the centre of Coast Road. Make sure you allow time to stop off and enjoy some of the walks and coastal views. Most famous for its pancake rocks and blowholes, both of which are spectacular and a must-see attraction, the loop track is a gentle 20 minute walk. Punakaiki is also the gateway to the dramatic limestone country of the Paparua National Park. This stunning area offers a wide range of fabulous outdoor activities. The road to Westport continues along the coast before heading inland amongst the thick native bush. Continuing on State Highway 6, you then descend towards the turn off into Westport over the Buller River Bridge. Situated where the mighty Buller River meets the sea is Westport. Westport is the main commercial and administrative centre for the northern part of the west coast, also known as Buller. First a gold mining town before becoming a booming coal region. This small but vibrant town offers a mix of cafes, restaurants and bars, and there are plenty of local arts and craft galleries, and much of the work is produced locally. While you're here, you must make a visit to the Coal Mining Museum, located in the centre of town, right here at the Information Centre. The various displays at the Coal Town Museum focus on the formation of coal, maritime history, unionism, the communities, transport and the men underground. On display you'll see the Q-Wagon, used on the world-famous Deniston Incline. This huge 8-tonne coal wagon is perched at 45 degrees to show the grade of the steepest part of the incline. A simulated underground mine gives you a great insight into the working conditions of the miners. Collections of photographs and objects paint a picture of the hard daily life, not just for the miners but also the families that called these wild and remote places home. There was only one practical way to get the black gold away from the coast for sale to the world's industries, and that was through the port at Westport, and the maritime display shows the attempts to tame the mighty Buller River and turn it into an operational port. Coaltown Museum is a fantastic all-weather attraction that appeals to all ages. 
A quick stop off to Rainbow Tea Rooms for lunch before heading out of Westport is a great idea. Home to the famous Rainbow Pies, with a fabulous variety of flavours and a favourite found in many places along the West Coast. A great range of delectable sandwiches and sweets are also available from the cabinet and all are made here on site. You can choose to relax in the cafe and why not grab a few items to take away with you. The Soapbox has a great selection of quality gifts, homeware, jewellery, a variety of new and used books, natural New Zealand made skincare products and a fabulous range of divine handmade soaps for all skin types. The Soapbox is also home to the luxurious private outdoor setting of the West Coast Bush Bath. If you want a relaxing hour to yourself in an old fashioned clawfoot cast iron bath or with a friend in a genuine double bath to simply unwind, reflect and have a good long relaxing soak, then this is definitely the way to go. You have the choice of a single or double bath for just over an hour, a choice of bubble bath or bath salts and receive two complimentary soaps to try and a face cloth. The West Coast Bush Bath is all about relaxing with Mother Nature and it's the perfect way to unwind after a long day. Near Sulamite's native bush and attractive surrounds, the Buller Bridge Motel is ideally situated adjacent to the Buller River and Millennium Walkway. With 15 clean, quiet, spacious, self-contained modern units and full cooking facilities, it's the perfect place to rest up on your stay in Westport. Every unit opens onto a quiet garden setting with a children's play area and there is also a barbecue available for use. The Buller Bridge Motel is off the main road, yet only minutes walk to the Westport Township. One and a half hours drive north of Westport and set in the sheltered basin of the Kahurangi National Park sits the small hamlet of Karamea. Karamea exists in splendid isolation, literally at the end of the road. Nestled perfectly between the densely forested mountains of the Kahirangi National Park and the wild Tasman Sea. It's the ultimate place to go if you want to get away from it all. A relaxing peaceful town with a nature wonderland right at its doorstep. Karamia enjoys a temperate subtropical climate, more attuned to the Nelson Tasman region than the rest of the west coast. Moderate and regular rainfall ensures the forests stay lush and green including the subtropical Nico palms which grow in profusion here. A short drive along the coast leads you to the unsealed road that will take you to one of the west coast best kept treasures, the ever impressive Oparara Basin. Paul Murray, a passionate Karamea resident, has spent plenty of time exploring the area and enjoys showcasing this beautiful picture setting to the world. So you are going to be taking us on a bit of a walking tour today, aren't you? I'm going to take you around the rainforest walks in the Oparara Basin. We're going to see the Oparara Arch, the largest limestone arch in the Southern Hemisphere, wow. the Mariah Gate Arch and the Miratam. OK, let's get going. Let's go. The trek leads you alongside the Oparara River, a notable tea-stained colour. This is due to the humic acid washing down through the tree roots. Endangered blue duck can also be seen on the river if you're lucky. Further along and amongst the dense moss-covered rainforest, you come across some impressive natural beauty and plenty more of that west coast water. So yeah, a lot of, lot of water up here and uh, it's obviously a rainforest. There's six metres of rain in this area. Annual rain for six metres and uh, yeah, everything's so lush and green all the time. Fantastic. Before you know it, you've reached the entry point to the limestone arches. And just a small climb to the top, you can then enjoy a breathtaking view of the epic Oparara Arch. At 43 metres high and 219 metres long, this is the largest in Australasia. From your starting point, you can also take the short track to the Mariah Gate Arch. Rihanna, we're going down a hole here. Hold. It's a bit slippery, so take care, yeah? OK. There's a chain to hold on to. Smaller in size, but arguably even more picturesque, stretching over the Oparara River. Got the, the stalactites hanging down, so this would have been at one time a, a limestone cave, yeah. and somehow or other the, the rivers managed to crack into the side of it and burst through the other side and made an arch. Yeah. 
explore down under the arch and spend time taking in this unique and inspiring Look. utopia. We're actually on top of the arch now. Continue on over the top of Moriah Gate. Walk amongst the ancient giants of the rainforest. Enjoy the spectacular picturesque views of the Maritan before finishing off the loop around the terrace. Located further around in the Kahurangi National Park is one of the nine New Zealand Great Walks, the Hefe Track. The 82 km tram covers a range of landscape and takes about four days for your average tramper. A relatively easy walk whatever your age, provided you're moderately fit. But for those that just want a short walk to soak up the environment amongst the broad range of native plants, then the Hefe Track is the ultimate. So these are native to New Zealand? Yeah, yeah, they're, um, these are the um, most southerly growing palms, the cow palms. Oh. Yeah, and they're flowering at the moment. There are plenty of beautiful walks tucked away amongst the Kahurangi National Park. Just check out karameainfo.co.nz. A stay in Karamea is a real treat, with a great range of accommodation options available, catering to any budget or requirements. Beginning the journey back to the east coast from Westport, we take State Highway 69. Next destination, Reefton. The road weaves through dense native bush that lead you to the waters of the Buller River. The Buller River flows through the deep canyon between Murchison and Westport. On one side you have the gigantic bush-clad hills and on the other, the mighty waters flow progressively through the gorge. There are a number of single lane roads between the towering hanging cliffs and the water's edge. Care should be taken, but for the most you can enjoy and even stop off at various lookout points to view the vast torrents that flow steadily through the gorge. Further along you make your way down past the river, through thick lush forest, then through rich green farmland along the Reefton Highway. Reefton, the little west coast town situated inland about 80 k's northeast of Greymouth. It's a serene town that boasts a significant and colourful history. The town itself was established in 1870 and became an innovative and prosperous place to live. Originally a gold mining town, it became a centre for coal mining in the 20th century. Reefton also gained fame by being the first town in the southern hemisphere to have a public supply of electricity, with the shops of the main street being lit up in time for Christmas in 1888. Reefton is an outdoors playground with some of the best four-wheel driving, hiking, mountain bike tracks and river rafting to suit all ages. It is also a world-renowned fishing spot. One of New Zealand's largest BMX and skateboard parks is popular for the local youth. Golfing and gold panning are also popular. The town is valued for its warm hospitality, cafes and good food, interesting and varied activities and restful laid-back atmosphere and it is home to some well-known artists whose work can be viewed at the local galleries. The Hale Gallery is situated on Broadway and is home to local artists that showcase their spectacular work. Alison Hale is a well-known local artist here. Alison's strong, vibrant style reflects the richness and diversity of the coast. The subjects capture the often subtle relationships between people and places, the courage and the strength of the pioneer woman, horses, cattle and the men that worked them. The gallery is open seven days a week, so pop into view and meet Alison if she's about. And just a two minute stroll from the town centre, the Bellbird Motel proudly displays Alison's work, a lovely treat for any guests staying here. Bellbird Motel offers a range of warm, affordable accommodation located right next to the Inangahua River in part like surroundings. An affordable place to stay with spectacular views. Another good place to stop off on your travels is the Picture Framers. As the name suggests, you can get your pictures, artwork or nearly any other item framed here. With a great selection of gifts for young and old, an assortment of clothing, gorgeous artwork and 3D images, and a huge selection of second-hand books. The picture framers also have quirky novelty ornamental gifts, knick-knacks and something to make you smile. The warm inviting staff are welcoming and always on hand to assist you. 
and make sure you say hello to Dom, the resident cat. Located on the main street, the Broadway Tea Rooms and Bakery have been a part of Reefton since its beginnings in 1874, and it's served the miners and their families for over 130 years. Over the years, recipes have been refined and passed down through the generations. And whether you have a sweet tooth or a hearty appetite, the meals and the treats, and of course the great coffee, are something that locals, visitors and travellers make room for. And it's here at the Broadway Tea Rooms that you can take off on your Around the Globe Goldmine Tour. A unique opportunity to go right into Oceana Gold's modern and fully operational open pit mine here in Reefton. The drive itself is an adventure. The private road climbs along 200 metres over 4 kilometres, with great views of the Inangahua Valley. The knowledgeable guides will drive you around to the edge of the open pit. Here you can get out and see enormous machinery, trucks, and if you are lucky, the yacht blowing up rock to excavate the land. Essentially, an entire hill is being relocated to reach a gold seam deep underground. This type of mining is no mean feat. So, as you can see, the view is pretty spectacular. At the top of the Globe Gold Mine, you can see the rugged Papadoa and Victoria Ranges. Your guide will explain the environmental management of the mine and the conservation park. You can also see the processing plant in full operation and learn all about modern gold mining methods. From the Broadway Tea Rooms, you can also experience the Heritage Tour, learn about Reefton's golden rush of the 1870s, explore the village and enjoy a hot cup of Billy tea and freshly made scones with the bearded miners. If you're looking for a majestic, tranquil place to eat, then Alfresco's Outdoor Eatery and Pizzeria is the ideal place. Here you can relax in the pleasant garden, veranda or weather setting. You can enjoy quality cuisine for lunch or evening dining, open seven days a week. Dining options include a full menu, or you can enjoy a scrumptious summer barbecue and salad. Takeaway is optional. What an unway to unwind, enjoy some fabulous food and of course some good old West Coast hospitality. Oh lovely, thank you. And if you are after a place to stay, our fresco offer quality heritage villas. Choose sole occupancy, self-contained accommodation or queen rooms with en-suites. Situated in a quiet area away from main highway traffic, and set in beautiful serene gardens, this historic former nurse's home has been tastily refurbished to provide cosy, affordable accommodation. Each room has an easy, comfortable setup. Facilities include 30 rooms, two fully equipped kitchens, large dining room and a charming barbecue area and courtyard. The old nurse's home also has other options for accommodating large groups and is easily affordable. This grand wooden art deco building has been revamped to suit today's needs, while still holding on to the original charm of its day. Situated in the centre of town is the Lantern Court Motel. Recently renovated to recreate the historic golden days of Reefton. A stone's throw away from the river, the spectacular motel has facilities to cater for any traveller and budget. The Lantern Court boasts six large units, ideal for families or small groups, with full kitchen facilities, TV and wireless internet. And for the couple or individual, you might like to stay in one of the newer modern units with full kitchen facilities, ensuite with the shower, some with spa baths, king size beds, phone, internet and Sky TV. All upstairs rooms have a large balcony with views overlooking the township and out to some of the spectacular scenery. State Highway 7, one of the eight national highways in New Zealand. It crosses the northern end of the Southern Alps and is one of the two major roads connecting the west to the east coast. Driving along State Highway 7 from Reefton to the Lewis Pass is a scenic feast. A lovely undulating ride through the steep bush forested in the Ngahua Gorge. A gentle climb to the Rahu Saddle before a short descent to Springs Junction. The road then climbs towards the colossal Lewis Pass, with thick lush rainforest lining the route, then a gentle climb down along the wide braided Waiā River. 
at the end of the Lewis Pass Road, you can make a left turn onto State Highway 7A. Here, you can indulge in the Alpine village of Hamner Springs. Nestled in a beautiful alpine setting is Hamner Springs. The town is built around a very popular hot spring. Discovered in the 19th century, the springs were produced by fractured rock bed along the Hamner fault line. While from the outset the thermal pools were used for recreational swimming, they also gained early recognition for health and recovery. A very popular tourist destination, the township swells with many visitors during holiday periods. Commonly known as a place to relax and to enjoy time away from busy lifestyles, it's also a favourite spot for families to enjoy lots of recreational activities. Compact and highly scenic, the Alpine Pacific Triangle links you to Hamner Springs, Kaikoura and Waipara. Between the three main destinations, you'll cruise through beautiful country landscapes and rural towns. One of the quietest and quaint country roads in the South Island is the backcountry roadway between Hamner Springs and Kaikoura. The inland Kaikoura Road offers an unparalleled peaceful drive that leads you right to the east coast. Kaikoura, where mountains meet the sea. A special place in rich in Māori history and home to some of the most spectacular wildlife and picturesque scenery in the world. There are plenty of activities that cater for all abilities, marine or land-based. The township offers an abundance of cafes and restaurants, showcasing some of the tastiest local cuisine. There are plenty of handcraft galleries to visit and the beach is only a short walk away. In the waters off the peninsula, a complex marine system provides an abundantly rich habitat for marine mammals and seabirds, making it an ideal place for getting close to nature. One of the best ways to fully experience this amazing sea life is to take a day trip on one of the thrill-seeking tours with Encounter Kaikoura. Encounter Kaikoura has been providing wildlife boat tours since 1989. The dolphin tour is the perfect opportunity to get close to and swim with or just watch the dusky dolphins in their natural environment. Dusky dolphins are resident in the coastal waters of Kaikoura all year round. Renowned for their acrobatic leaps and interactive behaviour, they are very sociable and like to show off their skills to an enthusiastic audience. Dusky dolphins live together in groups called pods, which in the Kaikoura region can consist of individuals numbering anywhere from a hundred to a thousand or more in a pod. Whether you choose to view from the boat or join the dolphins in the ocean, you will have a unique experience that will stay with you for a lifetime. Kaikoura is recognised as one of the best places in the world to regularly encounter wild dolphins in their natural state. The albatross encounter takes advantage of the epic diversity of albatross species and numerous other seabirds all located within 15 minutes of Kaikoura's coastline. So um, why do you think it's so important to have such a tour? Uh, it makes people aware um, and it's all about the conservation because it's, um, most of the albatross are very endangered. And uh, it gets people on side and uh, the more people out there that are uh, pushing for conservation the better. Mm. Now how far out do we go? Uh, we'll be going out probably about two and a half, three mile. Probably be a little bit uh, bouncy out there but it's all part of it. So every day is different? Every day is different but it won't be too over the top. Kaikoura's marine environment is home to more seabird species in a small area than anywhere else in New Zealand. The experienced guides on board are able to assist with identification of the birds and provide an educational and memorable commentary. So at the moment we've got a Salvin's albatross, which is the albatross of the grey head. We've got a big wandering albatross that's thinking about landing at the moment, and another albatross, a big wandering albatross out the back. And then we've got your aggressive oceanic vultures that we like to call them, which are your giant petrels here. Uh, they've got a very aggressive posture, uh, holding their wings out there. They're trying to make themselves look bigger and better than the other birds. And then your smaller birds, uh, they've got a few names, uh, Cape Petrel, a Cape Pigeon, or a Pentado. Now those birds uh, don't miss out. Uh, because as the bigger birds disturb all that fish liver, uh, small particles are dropping out the chum bag and that's what the smaller birds will be feeding on. And when you 
return to base, don't forget the on-site cafe has a delicious selection of freshly baked goods and great coffee. And you can also grab some memorabilia from the souvenir gift shop before you leave. Easily recognisable and hard to miss is New Zealand's largest crayfish that rests on top of the restaurant roof and has become one of New Zealand's greatest iconic landmarks. Located next door is the Lobster Inn Motel, only one kilometre north of the township and central to Kaikoura's many attractions and is the one-stop solution for all travellers. The Lobster Inn Motor Lodge has 27 self-contained, warm, cosy units to suit every traveller's needs. From studios for one to two people to the largest, spacious family units. All units are modern and offer comfort and style and look out to the stunning Kaikoura mountain ranges. When heading south towards Christchurch on State Highway 1, along the Kaikoura coastline, make sure you pull into the Power Rock Cafe and Bar. Famous for being only a stone throw away from the rocky shores, with some of the most spectacular views along the Kaikoura coastline. A local favourite, the Power Rock Cafe has a relaxing, friendly atmosphere and great food to boot. With a delicious selection of food from the cabinet, all made fresh on site, or if you'd prefer, you can sit back and relax and enjoy something from their menu. The Para Rock Cafe and Bar is also famous for their mussel pies, so make sure you stop in and try one for yourself before making your way back to Christchurch. Continuing along State Highway 1, you get to enjoy the scenic views of the Kaikoura coastline. Making your way back to Christchurch, you will pass through the rolling hills of the Waipara Valley. Well known for its spectacular wines, it is the fastest growing wine region in New Zealand. With around 80 vineyards in the Waipara Valley, covering more than 1,200 hectares of plantings. The team at Moa Clothing New Zealand have made sure that my experience exploring the outdoors has been a cosy one. To find out more, take a look at this. New Zealand is a wonderfully diverse and magnificent country. From the snow-capped mountains of the Southern Alps, to the lush rainforests of the Oparara Basins, to the sandy beaches of the Canterbury Plains. With all these wonders in such close proximity, you do need to be prepared for all weather when travelling. It's not unusual to encounter four seasons in one day. So, what better way to be prepared for all weather and to look fashionable at the same time than with Moa Gear New Zealand, where fashion meets the outdoors. Moa have you covered no matter the weather, from wet weather pants and warm dry jackets to summery apparel. And what better way to stand out from the crowd and show off that unique piece of New Zealand clothing when you get back home than with Moa and their vast range of bright and bold colours. Moa is not only available throughout New Zealand in every town you plan on visiting, but also the ones you'll discover along the way. back in Christchurch and what an amazing show it has been. How lucky are we to have a kaleidoscope of beautiful natural wonders right here on our back doorstep. I hope you've been inspired by some of the beautiful places we've been able to visit and showcase. And remember, Kaikoura and the West Coast are only a few hours drive from Christchurch and are well worth the visit. Well, that's it from me. Make sure you enjoy this summer and what the South Island has to offer. We'll see you again soon. For more information on other great places around the South Island, such as Central Otago, Queenstown and the Nelson region, make sure you get the latest issue of Take a Break. Hold on to your copy and keep an eye out for monthly competitions and giveaways and keep watching our show or go to CTV On Demand at ctv.co.nz. You can also jump on the Take A Break website for all the latest competition details. That's takeabreaksouthisland.co.nz. information on Take a Break with VTV, check out our website at ctv.co.nz. 
or to be a part of the show, you can contact Judith Harrington on 03 313 338 or email judith at takeabreaksouthisland.co.nz. Thank you.